الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمد ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد وما الحياة الدنيا إلا متاع الغرور the life of this world is full with deception 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 is where a person thinks it's just a fabrication he thinks he is getting something valuable for something nothing but in actual fact he is getting something which is worthless valueless insignificant meager has got no substantial value at all that is called a scam when a person is been conned then he's been scammed like the famous nigerian black money scam or the black dollar scam these are real life scams where they've gone to people told them that they were paperwork money which was utilized by ambassadors the cia operatives which to protect it there was a very expensive chemical they would then do a demo in front of the person show him the paper pass it through the chemical and make that money into a hundred dollar hundred us dollar note so the person witnessing this is amazed and he thinks now he's gonna retire for life and he's set for life then they promised to bring him an entire bag of those notes but he needs to purchase the chemicals they set up fake websites they set up a fake name they have a professional international person who's in the background with a international ex accent and he will come he will sell you the chemicals you will pay a lot of money eventually when you are handed that bag and all the chemicals a person is thinking okay i've got 5 10 15 million dollars he starts dreaming already he borrowed money from friends he borrowed money from family he lied to people say i'll give you five times the value ten times the value i'm busy what a big deal he didn't tell anybody how good the deal was because it was too good a deal they say if it's too good to be true it is too good to be true so when he got it back now all his dreams all the cars all the offshore bank balances all the uh, international beach run properties is 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 unfolding in front of him and as he starts passing that notes and nothing happens he goes into a panic but he doesn't believe it and the person tells him you know what we forgot to give you one chemical he'll pay the extra money he does it the second time he will fall for that story until eventually when it's too late he's been scammed but the scammers are gone his money is gone his life is gone we know people real life people that has happened of syndicates that are operating in central north africa where people have flown down specifically they would land in at the airport they would be picked up by a military vehicle they would go to the customs at the airport and inspect boxes of gold they would be told to take out samples they would go to refineries they would do tests the tests would be positive they would then draw as much money from everybody that they know till the last and only to pay taxes to pay the transit to pay customs to pay the un so every time a person goes he told another story he comes back to his country collects money goes back and they played so well because why you go to the bank you put the money but if paid the teller they paid the bank manager you go into a barclays bank and you deposit in money into customs in reality it's a scam the bank is real but it's a scam customs is real but it's a scam the goal itself is not real it's made to be portrayed as real but it's a scam and in this time that he's putting the money he continues and we met somebody who came to us and i said you know what has it that's a scam cut your losses but what stops a person two things one is they think so that you don't want them to get rich secondly is it's so real and those people obviously the 100 200 300 500 people have been down right so they've perfected the game you just the bait so no matter how much you try to convince that person he'll still take out more money and also you don't want to invest 
But when the day that cargo leaves Nairobi, Nairobi International Airport and is destined for Switzerland and you realize it landed in another country and you fly to the country still believing that those boxes are laden with gold and you struggle and long long stories are not going to get into it how people have been through all these scams but the day when you open that box and you realize it's a scam you finished you're gone but dunya is like that dunya does not shaitan nerves all these elements are not going to rest they've been engineered shaitan's capacity of how many people he has gone how many people have gone through iblis great great ulama great great mashaykh how many people has he conned so we need to be checking am i the scammed or the scammer will i take shaitan for a ride or is shaitan taking me for a ride is am i taking dunya for a ride or is dunya taking me for a ride if my house is on interest and i'm paying interest and i've declared war with allah then i need to be seriously worried if I know every brand on earth, and I'm particular about my brands, but I don't know the brand of Janab Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Today, nowadays, even if it's a fake brand, people walk around with arrogance. They want to show somebody, I got this brand. They're showing people, they displaying their brand. Who's displaying the brand of Janab Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Sometimes a child wants to read Salah, dress properly. They say, you're still too young. Are we encouraging other people for good or bad? Our own children. What's ideal? What for me? For my akhirat and I'm working to that goal. What's the ideal for my children for their dunya and akhirat and what am I encouraging them? What's the end goal? What's the end game? Otherwise, dunya is always shaky. Those that are healthy want to be sick. Some countries they claim from the government, they claim from the hospitals, they claim from the doctors, they claim from the insurance, so they want things to go wrong. The sick want to be healthy. The employee admires the boss. Oh, I wish I was a boss. I could do what I want to. But the boss, hey, I wish I was an employee. I'll just do my work and I'm free on weekends. I'm free after four o'clock. So it's account. Dunya is completely unstable. The person who's on the street looks at the big mansion. I wish I was sleeping in that mansion. The person in the mansion is looking at the person sleeping on the street. He's sleeping so nice. If only I could sleep like him. Young children always wish, hey, I wish I can get big, I can get old, I can get elderly, then I can do what I want. Us the elderly people, we wish we would be young again. People that are loving, pass by the grave and they wish I ate so much, I got so much issues, so much problems, so much stress. I wish I were dead. Go ask the dead people, they'll say, we wish we were loving. The dunya is completely unstable. We don't know the corn and how far the corn is going. One college student was delivering a pizza to an old man. All men said, I wish, I, I suppose you want a top grumbly what what a cross and a grumpy look. He said, I, I think so, yeah, you want a, a top. So the youngster smiled and he said, sir, it'll be much appreciated, whatever you want to give. But my other colleague who did the delivery previously said, you'll not cut even a quarter, you'll get nothing out of this old man. He's the stingiest of, stingiest of the lot. I would be lucky if I get anything. So the old man now very hurt, injured, insulted. He said, let's prove him wrong. Let's prove him wrong. Here's five dollars. So the youngster said, thank you very much, sir. This will help me with my school fund. So he said, uh, and what are you studying, oh young man? Applied psychology. Applied psychology. So that's the whole thing. The psychologist knows what to say. With technology, are we caught up with the cell phones or the internet? They say you caught up, how do you know your web page is more popular than you? And you never actually have met any of your friends. When an optician looks into this person's eyes, he sees a screensaver. When somebody is told that the house is burning, then they go to save their computers and their cell phone. Looking before they save anybody else, I need my cell phone, I need my data. All my information, my whole life is on there. When somebody says something and there's a question and nobody knows, the first thing he does is go into Google. We go, there's no knowledge left. Everything is Google. Hazrat Google, Mufti Google. When somebody asks, what did you say? Then this person replies, scroll up. Means we're too much into technology. We're too much into it. 
When a person gets in an elevator and he double clicks the elevator button, then you must know technology is in your blood. Technology is in your blood. When tech support calls you, then you must know technology is in your blood. When your data in your hard drive space you have, you know more about that than any other important thing in life. You're monitoring that. And whenever the internet or the Wi-Fi gets cut off, then you feel like somebody has died. Person gets the feeling like somebody has died. So this dunya is part of Doka, it's full of deception. That's why in the dunya hulwatun khadira, this world is green, it's lush. Allah has given you a responsibility to see if you fulfill this responsibility or not. فَاتَّقُوا الدُّنْيَا وَاتَّقُوا nisa. Beware of dunya because you'll get caught on that and beware of women. Why? Because the Bani Israel shaitan used women as a trap to deceive them. So these are all traps, plotting of shaitan. We need to make sure that we are not part of this plot. He said was a businessman traveling, he came out of his hotel, somebody robbed him, all his money was stolen. He was going to the airport, he asked the taxi how much, he said $15. He said, do me a favor, I'll give you the money when I reach home, I'll send it through Western Union, I'll get it to you, just help me out for this once. The taxi driver slammed the door and said, don't come to me for charity. So one year later, he was at the same hotel, he was coming out, and he noticed a long line of taxis, but the taxi driver, he remembered his registration, and he, he said, one day if I see him, I will get even with him. So he noticed the taxi driver, so he went to the first taxi, he said, uh, how much to this bank here? He said, $20. He said, you know what? We've planned a robbery and um, I just needed to do something there. I'm part of the robbery, the getaway vehicle. So you just need to get there at a certain time and drive me away. And I'll pay you 30 or 40 times what you want. Two, three thousand dollars, tell me your figure. So the person looked at him and he said, no way, sir. He went to the second one, third one, fourth one, till he came to that taxi driver. And he said, I needed to go to this place, how much he gave him the amount. He said, take me, no problem. But when he was driving out, passing the hotel, all the other taxis were looking at him weird and strange and he waved at them and he gave them a thumbs up. He got back, that person thought so, but he never even realized, he didn't even know he was being plotted against. The plan was against him. So Batil is like that. Bartil's got an uh, agent, then he got a double agent, and he got a triple agent. For example, if the KGB hires an agent, he's a single agent. Then they send him to the CIA, he's a double agent. And that same agent is working for Mossad, he's a triple agent. Dunya and the plotting of Bartil, and that we can't get into that. We don't have uh, lifetimes. We need to get into what will make my Allah happy. That's all. What's my Nabi's command? What would he have done in this time? I need to do that. They say, talking about uh, intelligence agency, the president wanted to test the uh, LAPD, the FBI and the CIA. So the test came first for the president said, I'll put a rabbit in a field and uh, let's see if you can find it. So the LAPD came out after two days and they came with a beaten bear. On it was a sign saying, I am the rabbit. Then they went to the CIA, what was your results? They, well, they placed in four omens and they placed all surveillance technology. And for three months of their extensive investigation, they concluded that rabbits don't exist. They concluded, rabbits don't exist, the president lied. Then they went to the FBI. So their results came after two weeks. They had no leads, no information, no data, nothing. So they set the forest on fire. They killed the entire forest, all the animals that were living there, including the rabbits. And they remained unrepented for the action. They were unaccountable, no consequences. And the results of their research was that the rabbit, the rabbit had provoked them. The rabbit had provoked them to do that. So that's the docker of this world. One uh, young girl made tea for her mother and uh, mother said, I didn't know that you could make so nice tea as she was drinking the tea. 
She was elated. She said, how did you make this tea? When you did it? So she said, no, I seen you. I observe you. I take the water. I boil the leaves. And I add sugar. I add uh, this here. Then I strained it into a cup. But I couldn't find the strainer. So I used the fly water. So the mother was shocked. She stopped drinking. She was choking on it. So the mother, knowing the daughter, knowing that the mother doesn't like anybody to use all the new things, she said, oh, Ami, don't worry, I use the old fly swatter. Don't worry, I use the old fly swatter. Inna dunya hulwatun khadira. This world is, 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 is luscious, it's green. But Allah has made you a representative of Allah. Fulfill your responsibility. If a person, now Nabi alayhi salam has beautifully explained that this dunya is green, lush, plush. Don't get caught into the scenery, but realize, look from outside. Allah has sent you there. That's not your objective. They say one intoxicated person was crossing the street. He seen a young lady walking with a young child. And he said, that's the ugliest child I've ever seen. He said, what a ugly child. So the lady burst into tears. Another lady that was far away seen this lady crying, so she came to her assistance. She came to console her. She said, what's the matter? What's wrong? She said, somebody has just insulted me and she was sobbing, she was crying. So the other lady said, no problem, don't worry. People are like that. And she said, yeah, here's some tissues to dry your face. And you're very lucky. She reached into a bag and she said, here's some bananas for your chimpanzee. Yes, some bananas for your chimpanzee. So dunya is like that. Isa alayhi sallam say, لا تتخذوا الدنيا ربا فتتخذوكم عبيدا Don't make dunya your rub because it will make you a slave. Provide and make enough provisions for your akhirat which will not get wasted and depleted. Because فَإِنَّ صَاهِبَ كَنْزِ الدُّنْيَا Whoever it makes his treasure, his life, his object of dunya يَخَافُ عَلَيْهِ الْآفَةِ that he knows this possibility it will get wiped out and destroyed. And a person of Akhirat, his things will not get destroyed. So either you're going to control dunya or dunya will control you. A person must make a decision. I'm going to be on the top of the ladder or at the bottom. One lecturer, college lecturer on the first day wanted to teach the children discipline. So on the first day in class, all the students were there. He said, anybody who thinks he's too big for his boot should stand up now. So nobody stood up, then a few months later, one student stood up and then he was shocked, the teacher and young man, what makes you think you too big for your boots? Why do you consider yourself too big for your boots? So the youngster said, excuse me, sir, I don't. I hate to see you stand up there on your own. I hate to stand up. I hate to see you standing up there on your own. So dunya is such. So we need to evaluate our lives, evaluate everything and check ourselves that am I fulfilling the purpose which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created me or am I caught in the strap of shaitan and iblis? One very important amal and surah which has been highlighted is Surah Al-Fatiha. Nabi Islam told us that obey that I to hibbu an u'alim kasuratan lam yanzil fi tawra wala al-injil wala fi al-zabur wala fi al-Qur'an fi al-Furqan mithlaha Should I not teach you such a surah never seen in the tawra, injil, zabur or Qur'an? Naam ya Rasool Allah So Nabi alayhi salam said فَقَرَا أُمَّ الْقُرْآنِ It is Surah Al-Fatiha It is Surah Al-Fatiha Another sahabi, ala ukhbiruka bi afdali al-Qur'an, bala qala alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. The most virtuous surah of the Qur'an is Surah Al-Fatiha, and this is Surah Al-Shifa. We should try to make it a habit when we read in Salah to ponder on the siyah, to ponder on the surah, there's a lot of meanings. Well, I give somebody to fiqh to learn the tafsir, let us learn it also. And to read it in our free time and ponder it on it. Allah give us to figure making amal.